The NVIDIA Gamescom presentation was packed with extreme performance and bad jokes. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So let's talk about this RTX series and then we'll talk about what worries me about those specific GPUs. So the main thing about this family is that it integrates three technologies into one to create an image. As mentioned on a previous video, you have the tensor cores for machine learning and AI, the ray tracing cores to calculate lights and reflections, and the Turing stream processors for regular object rasterization, shading, and other compute. Now we know this GPU is going to be faster and better, but let's talk about what is crazy with this three-way combo, but specifically the Tensor and RT cores. Let's start with the AI or Tensor cores. It doesn't start on your computer. It happens on NVIDIA's DGX2 supercomputers. These supercomputers are running constant simulations in-game to auto-complete and train an AI model, a sort of recipe that could be used by any GPUs with Tensor cores. This recipe or AI model is then sent to the AI portion of your GPU through an OTA update. At that point, your GPU uses this model to calculate lighting and reflections better using the ray tracing cores. This training method is nothing new in the AI field, but in gaming, it's pretty damn new. Now this can be used for many things, for anti-aliasing like Nvidia's deep learning super sampling, or to figure out which ray tracing ray is going to hit an object. And with that system, it means that image quality will truly improve with time as the supercomputers find better and better AI models. Then we have the ray tracing cores. Now while you could ray trace an entire image, this doesn't seem to be the focus Focus, and with good reason. Ray tracing is still really taxing, especially in gaming where so many things need to be calculated at the same time. So instead, the GPU rasterizes the basic structures and surfaces before ray tracing is used to compute the light effects like reflections and shadows. During the presentation, lighting and shadows was a big focus explaining how ray tracing really completes an image without the need to add additional spotlights or global illumination processes. Doing so could actually alleviate work from the stream processors so they can focus on better rasterization. So what does this all mean besides better performance? Well, it means that this is my opinion, by the way, that we're entering a new era of GPUs. Every NVIDIA iteration, starting from now, will see ray tracing used on more and more parts of the image until we get incredibly photorealistic motion in games. Keep in mind though, that AMD is not left behind. They've built ray tracing in Vulkan as part of the GPU Open initiative, so they're not forgotten, but they have a lot of work to do to integrate it properly. Are they gonna use AI too, or just raw performance, which is not likely with AMD, or do they have something different in the bank? It looks like we have some very interesting years ahead of us in the GPU space. And to end this topic, let's talk about the products real quick. We have the RTX 2080 with as many ray tracing capabilities as the Quadro 6000, that's 10 gig arrays, but at a sixth of the price or 999. The 2080 will have eight gig arrays at 699 and the 2070 will have six gig arrays at an affordable 499. Those prices are pretty good. The 2080s will be available for pre-order now and will be on the shelves on September 20th. The 2070 will be available in October. The reference cooler also gets a major upgrade with a dual fan cooler capable of diffusing the heat at a much lower noise level and it looks much better in my opinion. So yeah, it looks like I'll be saving up for a 2070. All right, let's move on to some gaming news. The Battlefield 5 open beta begins on September 6th with an early access starting on September 4th. The beta will include a 64 player conquest mode on Rotterdam or Arctic Fjord, those are the maps, a limited preview of Grand Operations mode and a five part Tides of War chapter. If you complete all five parts of the Tides of War, you will get an exclusive dog tag that you can take into the full game. Sweet, I guess. Then we have a features demo of Just Cause 4 and holy crap it looks good. I mean it shows us a plethora of new things you can do with the grappling hook like a charge blast, multiple airlifters and boosters that you can place using it. I mean we also get a glimpse of how tornadoes will be a part of the game. Personally if I buy this game it's just for the same reason as I bought Just Cause 3. To mess around with the gaming mechanics and find creative ways to fly around. Now let's answer a question from you guys and today it is, which do you prefer, air or liquid cooling? 
Personally, I prefer liquid cooling in 240 or 280 millimeters just because I usually keep it quieter than an air cooler while getting great performance. Although, I've never really owned one of the big boy air coolers like the Dark Rocks or the Noctuas. So don't base your choices on my experience. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the news guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to drop me a like and a comment down below. Hit that notification ring bell if you can. That would be greatly appreciated. That way you know when my videos pull up. Right here to see the latest video, that's last Friday's video, and right here to subscribe to the channel. Boom! All of this information in very little time. I've done it. I've mastered the art of outros. Probably not. Stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next one.